Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Pay particular attention to the conducting system and the respiratory divisions. The nasal area is lined with respiratory epithelium, as is the larynx and the trachea. I'd like to show you a section of trachea first. We'll not uh, show the nasal area or the laryngeal area. Start right with the trachea. We'll look at the scope now. The trachea has a C-shaped ring of cartilage. That's one of the components of the, of the tracheal tissues. And there's also glandular area. These are mucous glands here. And then we have a typical respiratory epithelium. This kind of epithelium lines the nasal area, the laryngeal area, trachea, and we'll see later also the bronchi. This is respiratory epithelium on the surface. It's pseudostratified columnar epithelium. There's also goblet cells. So we have three components in the trachea, a respiratory epithelium, mucous glands, and cartilage. Proceeding further in the conducting division now, the next tissue we want to look at is the bronchus. And I'll show you a section of bronchus on the next slide. You see we have the same components as we had in the trachea. Now the only difference is the lumen is going to be smaller, of course, starting to branch now, whereas we had one trachea, we're going to have several bronchi. This is a bronchus. There's cartilage on the right, mucous glands, there's smooth muscle in here, and we have respiratory epithelium. So it's a smaller lumen, and also now the cartilage ring is not C-shaped, but it's going to be incomplete. You see as we go up here, we have segments of this cartilage tissue. It's not a complete ring or C-shaped rings of cartilage. Same components though, remember that, as we had in the trachea. We've got cartilage, mucous glands, and respiratory epithelium. The two major differences now, it's a smaller lumen and incomplete ring of cartilage. The next component now in this branching system is going to be the bronchioles, and I'll show you a section of that. The lumen is getting smaller and smaller. The bronchiole, the major characteristic now, is the loss of cartilage. We're not going to find cartilage, but we'll have the same kind of epithelium. Let's look at this section now of a bronchiole. Here's the bronchiole. Now that's the same power as we had the trachea and the bronchi, the bronchus. So of course it's smaller and smaller. You notice here there's the pulmonary artery. That's down here to the lower left. In addition, we'll find a freshly oxygenated blood supply coming from the bronchial artery, and that's this. So we're going to find a triad here. Respiratory conducting division here, the conducting division, bronchiole, the pulmonary artery, that's carrying blood from the right ventricle, not oxygenated blood. Then we have oxygenated blood coming from the bronchial artery. Let's go to the, a higher power of this, 
see the definition of a bronchiole. There's the bronchiole, upper right, and the pulmonary artery. Now you can see, let's scan around here a little bit, the absence of large glands, no cartilage. These are smooth muscle wisps running in the wall of this bronchiole. The epithelium still ciliated and it has goblet cells in it, respiratory epithelium. Of course, it's getting less in dimension, less thickness, of course. That's the bronchiole. The next tissue in the conducting system of the respiratory system is the terminal bronchiole. And I'll show you that on the next section. Three important characteristics to be noted in the terminal bronchiole. We have a large increase in the proportion of smooth muscle in the wall. We now have a simple ciliated epithelium. A simple ciliated epithelium in contrast to before we had the pseudostratified. The third thing is there are no longer goblet cells. Three important characteristics of the terminal bronchiole. An increase in smooth muscle. You can see that here in the wall. There's a simple ciliated epithelium, and we do not have goblet cells. And I want to show you a higher power of that. This is the lumen above of a terminal bronchiole. And notice this is a simple columnar epithelium. It has cilia, but there are no goblet cells. And notice this bundle of smooth muscle. Relative to the size of the lumen, there's more smooth muscle in the wall of the terminal bronchiole compared to the other tissues of the conducting system. So we've got a ciliated epithelium, simple epithelium without goblet cells and a lot of smooth muscle. Also, just for your knowledge, here's some macrophages down here full of dust and phagocytized material. Now, this epithelium will go from a columnar to a cuboidal epithelium. And when it reaches a cuboidal, we're going to have the start of the respiratory system itself. And that's called a respiratory bronchiole, the first segment of that. And that will be the next segment. Here's the lumen of a longitudinally cut respiratory bronchiole. In the respiratory bronchiole, the ciliated epithelium goes from a cuboidal to a flattened squamous type epithelium. You see there's still some smooth muscle in the wall. This is now cross cut in this longitudinal section here. These are small bundles of smooth muscle. The epithelium is cuboidal and non-ciliated. Non -ciliated. One distinguishing characteristic of this respiratory bronchiole is you do have alveolar sacs coming off the wall, such as this. So we're actually in an area in the respiratory system where you can get interchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. This is a respiratory bronchiole. Now let's look here and see what happens. Now we're getting into an alveolar duct. This is an alveolar duct. And then branching off it are many alveolar sacs. Let's look over here and see if we get the same thing. The alveolar duct in the middle, and then alveolar sacs on the periphery.
can see the branching, the continuous branching. This is all respiratory division now. Respiratory bronchiole here. And the continuing branching. There's two alveolar ducts. And the epithelium now in all of this is squamous epithelium now in the alveolar sacs. This is where the real business of the lung, the respiratory interchange, takes place. I'd like to also show you one more section of a respiratory bronchiole in a crosscut section. It's a respiratory bronchiole here in the center. This is the segment that we lose the ciliate. So that it's ciliated cuboidal to non-ciliated cells in the lining epithelium of the respiratory bronchiole. Now you see there's still some smooth muscle and the very distinguishing characteristic is the fact that we get the some alveolar sacs branching off this respiratory bronchiole. Notice down here in the lower area we have the presence of the pulmonary artery still. Now to higher power let's look at some of the epithelium of the alveolar sacs themselves. Now this is a high power and these are alveolar sacs. And you have to account for the lining epithelium here which of course is now squamous and the endothelial cells because we've got capillaries now. The epithelium of the respiratory system now is on the periphery and then there's a huge capillary network in between these endothelial cells. There's also some macrophages in and about and some septal cells. This is where the interchange takes place. I don't know if you can see very, yeah, here's capillaries here, maybe the higher power will show us better resolution of this. This is a specimen that's been injected with red dye in the vessels. These are all capillaries. You don't see the endothelial cells very well. But look at the large number of capillaries that are in the walls of these alveolar sacs. You really don't appreciate that unless you see an injected specimen like this. All these red areas are the injected vascular tree, the capillary network in the alveolar sacs. Now I'd like to review for you the several segments of the epithelium and the tissues that comprise the respiratory system. The nasal mucosa and the laryngeal tissues are lined by pseudostratified columnar epithelium with goblet cells. As we approach the trachea, we have glands, mucous glands and cartilage in the wall and we have the same kind of epithelium, the pseudostratified, the respiratory epithelium. In the bronchus, we have the same tissues as in the trachea. We have the respiratory epithelium, the glands, and cartilage. However, now the cartilage is less complete. It's in segments around this bronchus. Further branching, we get into the bronchioles. And the major characteristic here, of course, is the loss of the cartilage. No longer do we have cartilage, and of course the lumen is smaller. We still have some pseudostratified epithelium. Now we're going to have the loss of the goblet cells here. The next division, then, is the terminal bronchiole. In the terminal bronchiole, we have a simple ciliated epithelium. First it's columnar, then it'll become cuboidal. The most unique feature 
is there are, is no cartilage, of course, but we have more smooth muscle. So it's a simple ciliated epithelium, no goblet cells, and a lot of smooth muscle. That comprises the conducting part of the respiratory system. Now the next, next division is the respiratory division. The first segment there, of course, is the respiratory bronchiole. That's a simple epithelium now. The cilia has been lost. There's no goblet cells. And we have outpouchings in this respiratory bronchiole of alveolar sacs. Then we continue on into the alveolar duct, which is just a passageway upon which there are many alveolar sacs branching off of the alveolar duct. And then we showed you the working part, the real respiratory part of the respiratory system, the alveolar sacs themselves, and we have a simple squamous epithelium. Of course, it's fenestrated, and we have in between that epithelium, we have huge numbers of capillaries. We've got the capillary endothelial cells there also. That completes our survey of the respiratory system. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.